Welcome back everybody. Today's lesson, lesson 3.6, is all about transformations of graphs of linear functions. Holy cow, that's a mouthful, right? We're going to split this up over a couple days. Uh, I'll be straight up honest with you, this is one of the more strange things that we do. Um, it's almost like reading a different language or learning to speak a different language. So it looks a little bit funky. Once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad, but it is definitely... Um, a bit awkward to look at at first. So uh, I'm sure that you're familiar with the word transformations. You've done transformations in other grade levels. Um, usually when you do have done transformations in the past, you've like done a reflection or a excuse me, a rotation or a translation of a shape, right? There's usually a design that you draw and then you do a flip, you do a turn, you do a slide, whatever. But what we're gonna look at in algebra class is how do we transform linear functions, lines, a graph that's a line. How do you slide a line one way or the other way? How do we uh, flip a line, like do a reflection of a line, right? How do we eventually um, rotate it and make it more steep or less steep? Those are all things we're eventually going to look at. Today, I want to focus more on the slides, the translations. Now, not transformation, translation, which is a slide. Uh, just to be uh, consistent here. This is what they call the parent function. Now, the parent function is like the easiest, most basic function that you can do. And in this case, f of x equals y, f of x equals x is the parent function. Uh, and in case you forgot, f of x is just a fancy way of saying y, right? Uh, this, is, this is just the way to write it as a function. It's called function notation. So if I did have to graph this, this is the easiest one you could do. This is what all of the other ones are going to be variations of, right? So if I just picked any numbers I want, I'm going to pick the easiest numbers ever, 1, 2, and 3. If I plug them in here for x, I'm going to say, okay, if x equals 1, what is the answer for y? Well, they're equal, so like the answer is just 1, right? It's so simple. There's no adding. There's no subtracting. There's no multiplying. You know, sometimes you plug a number in and you have to work everything out. There's no working anything out here. If I put 2 up in here, it just says y equals 2. If I put 3 up in here for x, it says y equals 3 or f of x equals 3, if I'm being really honest. So the graph of the basic function is 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, right? Negative 1, negative 1, any of these points. This is the, whoops, parent function, the basic one. This is the most basic line that you could make. It goes through the origin, has a slope of 1, up 1, to 1 to the right, up 1, 1 to the right. That is the parent function. Now, everything else that we graph is a just variation of it, right? It's either scooted one way or the other, scooted to the right or scooted to the left. Maybe it's scooted up, maybe it's scooted down. Maybe it gets flipped over, maybe it gets twisted or stretched or compressed where it becomes steeper or more shallow. And that's what we're gonna look, like, look at in this lesson. Um, what would variations of this, of this parent function look like, right? Uh, let me just show you. I'll do kind of an easy one here. What about if instead of, I'm going to erase this y because normally it's not the letter y. What about instead of f of x equals x, now all of a sudden we change it to f of x equals x minus 2, right? How does that change my graph whenever there's a minus 2 at the end? And that's what we're going to look at today. Um, how would we change the graph if it looks like x plus 5, right? How does that plus 5 change the graph? Does it move it up? Does it move it down? Does it move it to the right? Does it move it to the left? That's what we're going to try to get better at today. Um, some other things they can do. Whoa. They can do... Um, they can even put the letter X in parentheses and do the adding 5 inside of the parentheses. Right? Or they could do a subtracting inside of the parentheses. Right? One of these is going to move it up or down. The other one's going to move it right or left. And so that's what we want to look at here really quickly. Uh, I, well, I hope it's going to be fairly quickly. I don't know exactly how long this will take. Uh, let me just show you some basic examples here. Um, I guess this will maybe be the best place to start. What is the transformation? What is the transformation? Uh, here's how it'll look. They will give you a question where they'll say, describe the transformation from f of x equals x. Remember, that's the basic one. That's the parent to all of these choices. And it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll get to these eight in a minute, these four in a minute. Let's just do these basic ones here, right? 
Remember our slope intercept form? The difference between this and this, besides the fact that they switched the letter F to the letter G, don't let that bother you. They just, they just switch the letters just so you know it's a different graph, right? It's, it, the, the letter F and the letter G really don't have any effect on the actual graph itself. They're just showing you, okay, this is one and this is a different one because it has a different letter. But actually look after the equal sign. This just has an X and this has X plus three. What does that plus three do to our graph, right? Well, if you remember, the number after the X, if it's an adding or subtracting, is the Y intercept. And so what this graph actually would look like, if I kind of use this board I was using previously, what this graph would look like of G of X equals X plus three, if I do a little X and Y, it's really not Y, it's really X and G of X table, like if I just pick those easy numbers that I picked on the last one and I plug them in here, well, now I actually have some math to do. One plus three, okay, that's four. Two, if I put two up in there, two plus three, okay, that's five. And then if I put a three up there, three plus three, that's six. Um, and so then we graph one comma four, two comma five, three comma six. My graph doesn't go to six, but I'll just kind of freehand it. There we go. And if you look at these, we should have, if I can, if I would have drawn this better, we should have a parallel line. Now my line doesn't look that parallel because I'm not the greatest artist in the world. But this is a parallel line to the last one and it's just been bumped up, shifted, you could say, shifted up three places, right? Instead of having a y-intercept at the origin, now our y-intercept is at three. And do you notice how that's how we had the plus three at the end? So that plus three at the end, it has shifted us up. Every single point here got shifted up three units. This is a vertical translation, a slide, right? Remember translation is a fancy word for a slide? I hope you talked about that in sixth grade and seventh grade. So this is a vertical translation up three or three places to the, um, three places up. So that is what is going to be the effect whenever you have an adding or subtracting part after the variable. So like here, this is uh, a vertical translation up, that's a U, up three units, right? We shifted everything up three units. Uh, let's look at this next one in blue. H of X, the H doesn't mean anything, guys. The H is just there to show you it's a completely different graph. This says X plus one. So compared to my original one, the green one, this one says X plus one. This is gonna be a vertical translation up one unit, right? Everything would be shifted up one place from the origin. Uh, my next one, um, I feel like I have a different color. Here it is, I guess it's orange. J of X, now this one says X minus five. So X compared to X minus five, this is gonna be a vertical translation. But how's this one gonna be different? And instead of being plus three or plus one, now we have minus five. Can you guess how that's gonna be different? Right? Instead of up three and up one, this is gonna be down five units. So this is not going to cross the y-axis above the origin. This is gonna cross the y-axis, you know, like way down here somewhere at negative five. And then it would go kind of parallel like the other one did. And then this last one is, throwing my markers all over, sorry about that. K of X equals X minus 10. This is just an X, this is X minus 10. So this is a vertical translation 10 units down. So that's gonna be way down at negative 10. It's gonna be way down below the origin is where it's gonna to touch the y-axis. So big idea, big recap here. If they are adding or subtracting after the variable, right, where the y-intercept is, that is going to move it up or down, a vertical translation, up or down. Vertical meaning we're going up or down, right? Three units up one unit up if they're positives. If it's subtracting, that's gonna be going down. One unit down, five units down, 10 units down, whatever. Okay, now notice the difference on our right-hand side. Do you see the difference between the right-hand side and the left-hand side, the ones that I have all those colorful boxes around? See how this has adding three after the variable? And this has adding three inside of parentheses, included with the variable. Completely different. This is x minus three, the 
x minus three, excuse me, that's x plus three. This is x plus three is just one statement, one complete statement, two different terms. This is all one term. This is all grouped together in one piece. This is not going to be moving up or down. When it's in a parentheses like this, included with the variable, it's usually a letter X. It doesn't have to be a letter X, but whenever it's, whatever this input number is, all right, your domain, whenever the, the adding or subtracting is inside the parentheses, we're not gonna be moving it up and down. These are going to be horizontal translations. These are gonna be moving right or left. These are gonna be moving the graph right or left. And then here's what's so tricky about it. It's the opposite of the way that it looks, right? I'll show you why here in a second. But when it's inside the parentheses with the variable, right? Inside the parentheses, this is a letter L by the way. Sorry to get ahead of myself. This is a cursive letter L if you ever see that. I would do a regular letter L, but some people might confuse it with the number one. And so anytime they do a letter L, they'll do a cursive one. So L of X, X plus three, completely different than this. This is just X plus three, not in parentheses. This is X plus three in parentheses. It's part of the input here. This is going to move it three units, and it's the opposite of the way that it looks. Your brain tells you plus three would be three to the right, but it's actually the opposite. It's actually three units to the left. And you're like, huh? How does that happen? I'll show you in just one second, okay? Let me go ahead and get through the rest of these. So this is not a vertical translation. This is a horizontal translation. This is gonna slide the graph three units to the left. This one down here, let me go ahead and start putting my boxes around it. Plus two is inside the parentheses. That's my clue that it's a horizontal translation. And my instincts are to say plus two would be two to the right, but that's not it. These are always opposite of the way that it looks. This is actually two units to the left, and I'll show you why, I promise, just give me one minute. This one here, where it says x minus one in parentheses, okay, because it's in the parentheses with the input number here, it's horizontal. And this minus one, my instincts would say minus one goes to the left, but that's actually wrong. Remember, these are backwards, it's the opposite. It's the opposite of what's in there. So this is actually one to the right. This is gonna move it one to the right, and the same thing with this last one, p of x equaling, uh, in parentheses, x minus seven. This is actually gonna move it seven units to the right. It's gonna shift everything seven to the right. So that's the hardest part of today's lesson, I think. Whenever it's after the x and it's not included in the parentheses, it's up or it's down and it's very straightforward, it's not gonna confuse you. When it's in the parentheses, it's right or left, and then it's always the opposite of what it looks like. Plus three is actually three to the left. Let me show you why. I told you I, I would promise I would do that. Um.